All right, and then there is this, which is uh, just staggering, um, almost impossible to comprehend, and, and you try and figure out what the strategy is here, and there's just, it's seemingly not answerable. Uh, we have 212,000 deaths from the coronavirus and an economy that is struggling and people that are out of work, people that are desperate just to get through the week, and they are waiting on Washington to figure out what the next coronavirus relief package will be. And hear from the president in a series of tweets yesterday afternoon, the president said that he has instructed Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin to stop negotiations with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi until after the election. Then late last night, after the stock market dropped dramatically, the president reversed course and urged Congress to approve a series of new relief measures, including another round of stimulus checks. He tweeted, if I am sent a standalone bill for stimulus checks, $1,200, they will go out to our great people immediately. I am now, I am ready to sign now. Are you listening, Nancy? Let's bring in NBC <laughs> News Capitol Hill correspondent and host of Way Too Early, Casey Hunt, senior writer at Politico and co-author of the playbook, Jake Sherman. He's an MSNBC political contributor, and yes, Jake is wearing khakis and also former <laughs> Treasury Secretary, our official uh, future Treasury Secretary and Morning <laughs> Joe uh, economic analyst, Steve Ratner. Um, I want to begin with you, Casey Hunt, um, <sighs> and uh, perhaps it was the steroids talking, and uh, I'm not joking, actually. Perhaps it was the steroids talking, uh, but there's absolutely no political justification for the President of the United States in the midst of a severe economic downturn, with the Fed chairman warning that we could face disastrous consequences next year if another stimulus bill is not passed, to brag about being the person solely responsible for stopping stimulus relief. Is that the art packages. of the deal? No, it's not the art of the deal. I would guess after he did that, Republicans, uh, many Republicans who actually want to get reelected, like Susan Collins, were aghast. Uh, what can you tell us? Yeah, Susan Collins was aghast. She put a statement out to that very effect. Joe, it is incredibly mm. difficult to understand why this president has, has shown us repeatedly that he acts first in his own self-interest. And if you are facing voters in 27 days now, 28 days, your self-interest would include a 2.2 trillion or 1.6 a trillion, depending on which side you're talking about, injection of money into an economy that is on a slow road to nowhere good. And he, for whatever reason, decided he was going to tweet this a yesterday afternoon, not only that he wanted to kill the talks, but that it was his decision to kill the talks. Part of why we had some hopes that there might be something that could come of this was because House Speaker Nancy Pelosi was under pressure from moderate Democrats to show that she was doing something here. Uh, it had seemed that she wanted to hold out potentially for a more favorable Democratic Congress and a Democratic president and do something perhaps next year. She's really drawn that firm line in the sand. But many of her members said, we need to show our constituents we're doing something right now before the election. And that's part of why she was at the table. So for the president to step in and say, this is all on me, I'm shutting this down, uh, is just from a political perspective, incredibly difficult to understand. And when the stock market dropped, I think that helps explain why he suddenly reversed course. But the reality is the damage is done. Democrats are going to be able to point to that tweet and say the president killed this. It, it wasn't us. It was him. Wow. Jen, Jake Sherman, the president made this announcement just a couple of hours after the Fed chairman, Jerome Powell, came out and said, the American economy desperately needs stimulus. He talked about the ongoing economic tragedy in this country that will continue without the stimulus. Fast forward a couple of hours and President Trump says negotiations are over. I've told Republicans to pull out of them. What was the reaction on Capitol Hill from Republicans who've been trying in their own way, at least, to negotiate with Nancy Pelosi? Let me echo everything Casey said. It's crazy. I thought the president would be incentivized to throw Republicans under the bus because the truth is 
no matter what people might say. The truth is that that the president and the, the president's party, Republicans, did not want a $2 trillion bill. Now, if he was laid up in the hospital with coronavirus, I would imagine that he would be able to get McConnell to pass a $2 trillion bill. But there were actual substantive differences here. But the strange thing to me is like, and we, we uh, compared this, Willie, to the Big Lebowski in Playbook this morning, right? It's like when Walter said to Donnie, you're like a child who wanders in in the middle of the movie and has no frame of reference. Democrats have been calling for these small, or sorry, Republicans have been calling for these small bore bills for a month now. This is nothing new that the president's doing. If he were aware and cognizant and alert for the last three months, he might have gotten a deal. But instead, whatever he's been doing, he's not been paying attention to COVID relief negotiations. He's he's detailed Stephen Mnuchin to do this. Um, it's such a bizarre strategy because if any American president in the last 30 years had an opposition party that was willing to say, we will, you could spend $2 trillion now in the weeks before the election, they would say yes. But Donald Trump, since he's not really engaged or aware of the legislative process or listening to anybody's strategy here, um, he's not, he, he, he turned it down. But I mean, listen, this is all to paper over the actual substantive differences between Republicans and Democrats on this issue. So, Jake, the president, once the markets went into a tailspin, once he presumably started hearing from some Republicans, uh, he offered a standalone $1,200 <laughs> stimulus check to Americans. Is there any chance something like that passes through Congress? No. No, there's zero chance. Uh, not zero chance, but a very, I, I can't imagine there's a chance of that. I mean, Nancy Pelosi uh, seems willing to provide money to the airline industry, which has said it's going to lay off, you know, between 10 and 50,000 people in the coming weeks and has already started, I think, by some reports. That is possible. Republicans actually blocked that bill last week. So uh, hmm. he needs to get in sync with his party here. But a small bore bill 20 something days before the election. I hope Casey doesn't disagree with me here. I just think it's extraordinary narrowly unlikely. Casey, what do you think? Yeah, no, I don't disagree with that at all, because the reality is, you know, President Trump wants to send those checks because he wants to be able to sign them and he wants people to get them in the mail right before they go to the ballot box. And the reality is that that money is nowhere near enough to actually make a big difference. So for Democrats to say yes to something like that while leaving so many others behind. I mean, they're going to look at that and say this is this is absolutely a non starter. So thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.